You know, as much as I bully you brown rice chicken breast eating people, you know that I love you beefcake looking ass motherfuckers, right? Bear with me on this one, it's gonna be quite an episode. Are you a uni student or an early professional with no real time, money or skills? You've come to the right goddamn place. Welcome to The Bad Chef, fast and cheap meals for fast and cheap people. My name is Chi, and I'm a bad chef. If you're eating chicken breast and brown rice on the reg, the reason why you're single isn't because you're not going to the gym enough, it's because you have just about as much personality as the food that you eat. You know the saying, you are what you eat. Mr. Chicken and Rice is a boring and uncharismatic numpty who compensates for his lack of personality by going to the gym so often that they distract themselves from the inconvenient reality of not having anything else to offer. Nobody wants to date a boiled chicken titty on brown rice. I mean, why are you doing that to yourself? Especially when you can have something that's pretty much just as healthy, but it tastes about a million billion times better. Fuck your chicken and rice. Today we're going to make paella. Paella is a Spanish ass food that's probably the biggest culinary export to come out of Spain. It's a sunny and fun dish that's basically rice that's been cooked in chicken or seafood stock with a bunch of fresh meat and veg on top. Typically, the most popular one is seafood because of its origins to the seaside city of Valencia. But it's also commonly paired with chicken with versatile versions containing beef or pork. But today, I'm going to be running through my thoroughly non-traditional version that I call poor man's paella. Traditionally, paella has prawns and mussels arranged around a giant paella pan, but that pan is some specialist equipment that a home cook isn't likely to have. Plus, actual seafood is expensive, so for today, we're going to use marinara mix. Now, marinara mix is pretty much the happy dip from a fish shop. It's all the unsold but still good fish that's been cut up and mixed together. Um, as far as I know, I don't think Woolies does this. I think they use a standardized mix of mussels, prawns, calamari, barsa, and other bits and pieces here and there. It's not top shelf stuff. It's usually frozen, but at $12 a kilo, it's a cheap way uh, of buying something that's low in fat and high in protein. We're also going to use this discounted chorizo, two medium onions, four cloves of garlic, whatever tomatoes you have lying about, one red capsicum, one liter of chicken stock, a splash of dry sherry, two cups of jasmine rice, one cup of frozen peas, salt, pepper, and saffron. Now, saffron is, well, it's a signature of the dish, but it's also singularly the most expensive item on our shopping list in this recipe. It's like $1,300 per kilo, and that's literally more expensive than gold. And the reason why it's so expensive is because it's the tiny little stigma of the saffron flower. And each flower only produces like three of them. So to create a kilo of saffron, you need to harvest about 175,000 individual flowers. So if you need to sub the saffron, you could use imitation saffron powder, which runs for about $2 for 20 grams, and that'll do the job. But if you use real saffron, you just need a sparse scattering of strands. So a $7 pack like this should last you for about three to four cooks, if not more. And using real saffron would give your rice a lovely fragrance and also a vibrant yellow color. Now, about the rice. If you want to be super legit, try to find some Spanish bomba rice. But if you can't find that, ideally you'd like rice that absorbs a lot of fluid without breaking apart. But since this is my poor man's version, I'm going to be using the rice that I found in my pantry, which is jasmine rice, and that will work just as well. No brown rice today though, none of that. Also, know that today we're not going to be washing our rice. The reason why we wash our rice is to get off all the starch, but today we actually want the starch to stay in to help everything gel together a little bit better. So by leaving on the starch, it'll help our paella develop its thickness. Mmm. But, Enough notes, let's get cooking. Now, first things first, the best thing about paella is that it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's supposed to be a fun and forgiving sort of cook. So, outside of the rice to stock ratio, everything should be relatively gentle. So relax, chill, do like the Spanish do and have a laugh while you're doing it. Alrighty, let's go. To prep, put the marinara in a strainer and let it come to room temperature. 
If it's from a frozen source, it'll let all the thawed piss to drain out of it and it'll make for a better sear. Then, dice the onions, garlic, capsicum and tomatoes. You don't have to be too fine with it, just roughly will do. And after that's done, slice the chorizo into coins and that's it, that's all the prep. To cook, get the biggest pan you have. I'm using my 30cm sauté pan which is fucking huge. But if you only have a regular sized pan, divide all the amounts by two. Heat up a good splash of olive oil to medium temperature, then chuck the chorizo into the pan. Cook the chorizo through until the fat is released, then remove the sausage but keep the fat. Then, turn the heat to full whack, let the pan get to temperature, then dump the marinara into the pan. Season with salt and pepper, and a little garlic powder or paprika if you want, and sear off the marinara until the surfaces are sealed. If it's frozen, it won't sear as well as fresh marinara, but don't be too judgy about it. Remove the marinara from the pan and set it aside. Subsequently, there might be a little bit of water left in the pan, so let it evaporate off. Then, add a little bit more olive oil, then add the onions and garlic. Fry these off for a bit, then add the capsicum and tomatoes. Fry these off until they've collapsed a little bit. Then, add a splash of sherry, wait for the alcohol to boil off, then pour in the rice. Mix everything up until it's even. Then pour in the stock, sprinkle the saffron over the dish, and stir it a little bit until it's completely combined. Bring to a boil, then reduce the heat to the lowest level. If it's struggling to come to a boil, cover for a few minutes then remove the lid to simmer uncovered. Let the rice absorb the stock on the low simmer for about 10 minutes, then add the peas and simmer for a further 8 minutes. To finish, add back the marinara mix and the chorizo, stir it back together and let it come to temperature and cook for a further 2 minutes. And that's pretty much it done. The rest of the pizzazz is just in terms of garnishing. If you're cooking for a party, then you could just plonk the whole pan down in the middle of the table with a few lemon wedges scattered over the top. But if you're cooking just for yourself, just thump it into a bowl and chow it down. And there we go, that's our paella done. I love Spain and I love Spanish people. Holy shit, dude. Alrighty, sit rep. You have no idea how happy this dish makes me feel. I mean, my Labrador brain is going absolutely ape shit at the moment because of how bright, sunny, and fun this dish is to, to eat. I mean, holy shit, dude. The lemon adds a little zing to everything, but it ties in so nicely with the saffron with its uh, mellow and golden flavors. And then you've got all the vegetal flavors from the onions, the capsicums, they're tying in so nicely with the seafood while they're having a bit of a party with the chorizo next door. I mean, it's just a dance floor, this entire dish. It's ever so Mediterranean. Whew, hell yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> For real though, this is not a dish that you eat with a serious face. This isn't fine dining. This is an unpretentious celebration of the fact that you're alive. Whatever God you believe in has blessed you with the fortune of being able to eat paella at this very moment. And the best part about that is that you can experience this at any time in the comfort of your own home. It's not that expensive either. I mean, the whole thing was about $33 altogether. And that will be good for about 10 meals if you're the size of a small dog, or one if your stomach is a black hole. But regular people should get about six to eight meals out of this. So call it about $5 a meal and it's most expensive. I will say though, if you wanted to improve on this dish, you'd use some actual seafood, like fresh seafood, you know, like shelled mussels or tiger prawns. And the best part of that is that they leak out their own juices, which goes into the rice and makes everything taste even more seafoody. And plus the prawns and mussels would be a goddamn treat to eat anyway but expensive. Also, proper mussels and prawns have shells. 
This is completely shellless and bone free. So you can shovel the entire thing into your mouth without worrying about a single goddamn thing. I mean, life's too short to be peeling prawns and worrying about eating shells. Mm. Anyway, this was a Spanish style poor man's pear. Done. Mmm.